Hi, and welcome to the Own Your Crypto podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Olson, head of growth at Xverse, the most advanced Web3 Bitcoin wallet, where we believe in connecting the world to a more accessible, decentralized economy. If you're curious about the latest and greatest tech building on Bitcoin, you're in the right place. Each episode, we invite experts to share exciting updates about what they're working on in the ecosystem so we can share the knowledge and tools for you to own your crypto. Through casual conversations, we cover topics like blockchain technology, DeFi, financial literacy, and how to use Web3 on Bitcoin in practical ways. If you'd like to tune in live, ask questions, or join the conversation, be sure to follow Xverse on Twitter at Xverse App. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone, to the very first Own Your Crypto show. We appreciate all of you being here today. I'm Elizabeth Olson, head of growth at Xverse, the most advanced Web3 Bitcoin wallet. And today we're going to be speaking about a very exciting and relevant topic, how the future of crypto starts with security, covering what's happening with security in the Stacks ecosystem, why it's important, tips for how to keep your crypto safe, future improvements and regions, and so much more. So to set the stage, I'd like to share a few stats on why this is such a hot topic today. For those of you who may not be aware, in 2021 alone, an analysis showed users lost $14 billion to crypto scams, with 72% coming through decentralized finance protocols. Through the first quarter of this year, the Federal Trade Commission reported over $329 million stolen in crypto. And most recently, just in the last few days of this month, we've seen headlines of various attacks, including Solana Slope Wallet, and most recently, with Nomad Bridge losing a devastating $190 million due to security exploits. So clearly, there's a lot of concern in the crypto community about security, and questions are being understandably raised around what steps are being taken to protect users. So joining us today to address this important topic, we're thrilled to bring in the experts. We have Lewis from Ryder, the world's first social wallet. Chris and Dave from Multisafe, a leading multi-sig management platform. Mark, Farah, Karen, Tala from Hero, the original Stacks wallet. And of course, our very own founder, Ken Lau from Xverse. So we've got plenty of questions for you all today. And as we go about our conversation, I'll let you go ahead and explain to our listeners more about what you're working on. We have Mark here today from Hero. So Mark, as the original wallet in the Stacks ecosystem, have you seen any major attacks or ongoing scams circulating in the ecosystem over the years? Or do you have any concerns about possible threats that could be happening in the future for our ecosystem? I think we've been lucky so far as an ecosystem. We haven't really suffered a sort of wallet-based attack yet. We've had various vulnerabilities that we've had to patch in the past. And Hero Wallet's been around a year and a half now since the launch of Stacks 2.0. And it was built on even Stacks 1.0, a technology from before then. So we've had a lot of time just to iterate and harden the security of the wallet. And at various times, there have been vulnerabilities we've had to patch till we've disclosed them. But to my knowledge, we haven't had any sort of large actual exploit of a wallet. We've been lucky. It could happen any time, of course. I think we see in other ecosystems that it does happen all the time. And so we have to be very vigilant, making sure we reduce the possibility that it happens. And maybe you can actually break that down to us just to shed some light on steps that Hero takes to prevent tax that we've been seeing around the ecosystems. Yeah, from time to time, we use third-party extra and expertise eyes on our code, and they can do what's called penetration testing and essentially try to break into the wallet. We worked with Least Authority, for example, on that. We did that last year, and we do it again before too long. We're building Bitcoin functionality into the, the Hero wallet quite soon. And that'll be a great opportunity for us to make sure we have outside eyes on it. And we also make sure that we don't have features that could be more prone to hacking. There was a vulnerability disclosed with a near wallet recently. There's a custodial feature in which a very similar sort of leak took place as far as secret keys. And uh, we don't have a custodial feature in the Hero wallet anymore. That's one sort of area which could be particularly prone to these sorts of things. Also, with any kind of third-party analytics or logging like Sentry, which is involved with the hack last week at Solana, we're very particular about how we integrate those things. We make sure that we, in general, do not collect or report any sort of personal information in any way, and especially those services. We have sort of an inclusion-based policy and programmatic approach instead of an all sort of inclusive one, which I believe is what got that wallet into trouble. We're also considering upgrades to the Hero Wallet to essentially cordon off the secret key handling so that it's a safer, sort of separated part of the code base that would make any kind of leaks, either client-side or server-side, even less likely. 
looking at integrating a security enclave of sorts and software for the Hero Wallet just to ensure that the key is handled in a very separate part of the code base than the rest to prevent theoretical ways in which key values could be leaked. And last week, I think during the Solana attack, people were speculating about supply side attacks. Essentially, a, a malicious dependency could be used by the wallet code base and inadvertently that could lead to to stealing, stealing of funds. We're looking to lava moat to protect our software base from that. And then this is industry standard, but recently we added ledger support to the extension and we've had it for the desktop wallet for a long time now. But hardware wallets essentially are the safest way to keep your keys and your funds. And so making sure that ledger support has been a priority for both of the form factors, both the extension and desktop, has been an important way for us to help secure funds. And then finally, we don't have multi-sig support yet, but we are looking into that perhaps for early next year in Q1, sort of protocol level multi-sig and some more sort of contract level multi-safe, which I think we'll be hearing more about today. And I think both of those are very exciting ways to further secure funds. Great. Thank you. Yeah, we do have some exciting announcement coming up soon. But first, since you happen to mention hardware wallets, let's bring Lewis from Ryder up to the stage. Lewis, can you tell us about why you decided to create Ryder and perhaps also just start with the basics of helping our listeners understand the advantages of a hardware wallet? Yeah, definitely. Hello, guys. My name is Lewis, and I'm the co-founder of Ryder. So in a nutshell, we have a big thesis when it comes to the evolution of wallets. So for example, today we're discussing about software wallet. The prime examples are Hero, MetaMask, and Fado on Solana. And the next one is we also have hardware wallets such as Ledger. For Ryder, we're pioneering a new kind of wallet, what we call social wallet, wherein we bring real-life interactions to crypto. Hardware wallets are essential because by the end of the day, you don't want your master keys or private connected to a device that's on the internet, right? Or your mobile phone. Because if you have your master keys there, or even just like your crypto, the attack vector is very large. You want to want like a separate device off the chain that's offline. That's why you have cold storage such as Trash Run Ledger. The same for Ryder. Is there anything coming up in the next year or so that excites you regarding the future of Ryder and security? Yeah, so for us at Ryder, we try to opt in for simplicity because in order to have the high security, the design should be simple at its core. The same with Bitcoin. You can see the architecture is quite simple. That's why it's like the most secure chain in the world. And same for Ryder. So with Ryder, we tried to opt out. We opted out for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. There's no even a port for your rider so it's just like watch charging nfc secure enclave and just like an led display for your nft that's pretty much it and by combining all those technology you have the high security and we basically just embed your on-chain identity with what we call near field communication and by combining both tech you're able to bring on-chain assets within the physical space and that thing is special because it unlocks a lot of like social features that we can implement with rider that's what I'm excited about. But of course, I'm biased because I'm from Ryder. No, that's fantastic. How would this make the wallet more secure? Like, how does that tie in with the social aspect? Yeah, so for us, you should just think of Ryder as like an endpoint, right? Such as Dresser and Ledger. But in a way, it's much more user-friendly. Because right now, if you want to try and send a transaction from this hardware wallet, it's quite cumbersome, right? You try to input like a six-pin 2FA, on this tiny screen and press these two buttons to put numbers on it and then unlock it. And my parents will never do it. Even my friends the same age won't do it. But what if there's a way when you capitalize on the power of the single tap? Within a single tap, you're able to send a secure transaction. And that's what we're trying to achieve with Ryder. And I think it's going to be the future as well. You try to make everything seamless. No, definitely. I think the more we discover ways to mitigate friction and make the user experience more seamless, especially when it comes to security. I think this is going to be more and more impactful for the ecosystem in general. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I'd also like to bring Chris to the stage, Chris from Multisafe. We have an exciting announcement today that we've begun to tease out coming up to this Twitter space. Chris, actually, would you like to share the big news? Hey, how's it going? Happy to be here. Yeah, the, the big news is that MultiSafe will be integrated into Xverse. 
So very excited. There's been a team of us working on that. Tala is the lead dev. I want to say it was Ken and Alice and a bunch of people's collaboration on this over the past past few weeks. But yeah, this is coming. So we have also David here from Multisafe. So perhaps tell us about what is a multisig wallet and how this is going to be offering more security options to users. Yeah, totally. A multisig is a shared wallet. The analogy in the Ethereum world is Gnosis Safe, rebranded to Safe recently. We've built that for Bitcoin stacks so that naturally heightened security in order to deploy or spend funds from a wallet, multiple signers need to sign off. So that's multi-save, which you can deploy today. We're actually rebranding it a little bit, updating the brand, refining it, but you can go to app.multisafe.xyz to actually deploy your first safe. And just to break it down a bit more, from my understanding, you can choose not only the number of users that have access to that wallet, but also the number of users that would need to approve in order for a transaction to happen. Is that correct? That's correct. That's really the essence of it. It adds that really important layer of security in order to spend the funds from a multi-safe wallet. The natural use case is you would have at least two signers and you could add more signers as well. I'm back. Great. You're back on stage. And actually, perhaps you can let us know a bit more what kind of impact this will have on communities and for enterprises who need to be able to use shared funds. The big influence for us, of course, is the Gnosis Safe in the Ethereum ecosystem, which has just been such like a flywheel of innovation over there. And it's this really small kind of thing. It's like the ability to share, have multiple owners of assets. It's a small idea, but it's a really important first Lego block in order to building a lot of other ideas. And yeah, we really hope that Multisafe as this open source project that anyone can start using now, like Dave said, just app.multisafe.xyz is this first building block toward whether you're working with your Alex token or your stacks or NFTs from Gamma, or you're thinking about Bitcoin funding or governance, like all of this at the base can be the secure multiple owner. Really, it's a smart contract that you're deploying. You own it. Every bit of it is just open source and on the blockchain. And yeah, it's a really composable part that can be a great building block for future projects on stacks. And also, I don't know if it got mentioned yet when I got booted, but we'll pretty soon also have native Bitcoin integration with Magic. So likely around October. It's already in the smart contract and has been audited and passed the audit and everything, but we'll have the UI rebranding. So you'll be able to send native Bitcoin straight to the multi-safe and then have that custody with multiple wallets, which really doesn't even exist like in a great UI right now. There's a lot of things out there like Electrum, which is okay of an experience. And there's Casa, the costs and stuff. So I think having this a really composable piece that can now accept Bitcoin, swap that into Zest or Alex or all these different tokens and use it for DeFi and different projects. There's just like a world of possibility. And I imagine this would also open up so many more use cases for companies' payroll. 100%. Yeah. Actually, it was Grace's from Crash Punk's original idea where she wanted to pay people for artwork and she was had the problem of doing it out of her own hero wallet. And really just needed a way she didn't want to have to bear. And we're talking about security. She didn't want to have to bear not only being the sole person to have custody of the funds, which were the community's funds, but then also executing those transactions on behalf of creating the leap from Crash Punks as just a community and bringing it to the DAO level. So yeah, credit to Grace, who originally we chatted with probably about 40 different people in the Stacks ecosystem about this. And she was like, payroll is a problem for me. And so that's funny you mentioned it, because that's definitely a great use case that, that Grace is already starting to get off the ground with Multisafe. And is there something in particular that you're really excited in, in partnering with experts for this? Yeah, I think just making... It's a smart contract, and we have one user interface for it, but just integrating it more naturally into the flow of how people use these apps. Some of the best technologies are the invisible ones that you don't have to think about so much. If you're in your expert's wallet and you have to approve a transaction, it's nice to just have it all in one place. You don't want to have to go to all these different sites for every single thing. And so I think the and that's why we made it its own kind of composable piece because we were hoping for that kind of integration to bring it to where people are. So yeah, I think we are, we're big believers that just making it easy for people 
on the UI, which is a lot of what Xverse is doing for us, is great. And on the back end, you know, we have the power of Trust Machines, really supporting the security of it with bug bounties and multiple audits that we've already passed one. We have others coming up. And so I think the security plus the UI is, is really what we need. And so thanks to Xverse for helping us get that next step forward. Absolutely. And I think this is probably particularly exciting that people will be able to do all of this on the go as a mobile wallet. And so I also wanted to bring Ken up to the stage as the leading mobile wallet in the ecosystem, which can be often criticized as being more vulnerable to attacks. What engineering practices are in place to keep our users safe? Yeah, I'm very excited to have multi-save integration in the works with Xverse. As Chris said, one of the problems with multi-sig wallets is that, at least in the Bitcoin space, there hasn't been any really good wallets that offer multi-sig with a good user experience. If you actually try to set up one, it would be very difficult unless you really know what you're doing. So I think with this step, we are making multi-sig wallets easy to create and use, especially with Xverse being all mobile first, which offers a lot of the convenience features. For example, you could share a notification with another wallet owner really easily through a mobile app with push notifications and a bunch of other user interface improvements. So yeah, super excited to have multi-save as one of our next features. And then to your question, it's actually not true that mobile wallets are any less secure than desktop wallets. So with most modern smartphones, there are actually hardware security modules built into the phones, which help secure the keys. So that prevents applications from being able to access the user's private key. That's one of the things that is an advantage of a mobile wallet. And also, just on the protocol level, so Stacks has a really different transaction system compared to Ethereum, where there is something called a post condition that's attached to each transaction. So these are essentially safety conditions in which you can specify whether or not any asset is moved in this transaction. And if any asset is moved while well, it's not supposed to, this transaction will actually fail. So this offers users some protection against potentially malicious smart contracts or just faulty smart contracts. I think those are the differences in which stacks can be much more secure than some of the existing blockchains out there right now. So in this case, a lot of the attacks that we were seeing in 2021 and even most recently, would you say some of these would not therefore be possible on the Stacks blockchain? So the recent attack on Nomad, so what happened there was I think in Ethereum, a wallet can give a smart contract basically access to move users' funds after they grant permission. And you can actually give unlimited permission, which means the malicious smart contract can actually drain your entire wallet without you doing anything. And that type of functionality actually does not even exist in Stacks. So you can only grant permission on a per transaction basis to move assets. You can't just say, I grant this smart contract the ability to move any asset in my account for an indefinite amount of time. And I think... Specifically, that nomad attack probably will not happen in Stacks. Wonderful. I think that's really ensuring for everyone listening today who has a wallet on Stacks, whether it's Xverse, Hero, or Rider. We know some of these attacks are not even possible on our blockchain and can be prevented. And especially, I think this is why, in the first place, we're looking to build on Bitcoin, which is the most decentralized and secure blockchain. So also wanted to ask, I guess this could be for Ken or for Mark, why, since both Hero and Xverse are using least authority, how did you go about in deciding which auditing service to use? Yeah, I think there's nothing particular about least authority, but they are really experienced and experts in the field. I think to really have great security, you will want to have multiple security audits done by multiple firms. The resources allow. So I've worked with Lease Authority for many years, and I think their work is great. Xverse also had a security audit done with Lease Authority, and we want to continue using them in the future. But also, 
we would be looking at other firms as well. Yeah, I'll just add to that. I think lease authority and our experience have been very thorough and detailed with their audits. We've worked with several providers in the past, and Certic, for example, was another one of them. And uh, we also see the value of having a diversity of different companies. But uh, we've used the work of Lisa Tordi, I think, twice with the Hero Wall because we've been very impressed with your attentiveness. Wonderful. And Ken, I wanted to pass the mic back to you as well. Just curious to know if there are plans for experts to offer custodial options for users in the future. For example, in the case of a secret recovery phrase going missing, I don't know about you all, but I remember being quite shocked joining the crypto community amidst all the cutting edge tech we have that you're actually required or it's encouraged to write down a secret phrase, something so important on a piece of paper, <laughs> which feels almost a bit medieval. So just curious, what are your recommendations around secret recovery phrases? And do we plan to offer some custodial options with experts in the future? I can take a, a stab at that if Ken's not here. From my point of view, I think we've done user testing around this and seeing what kind of options users gravitate towards, whether it's storing their keys on paper or in there's a notes app on their phone, et cetera. My general sense, and of course, each person's different has to choose, but password managers like 1Password are actually pretty good go-to secure sort of places to put your key and make sure that they're available later, that you won't lose them. People might have their concerns about password managers, but they are relatively safe. Yeah, thank you, Mark, for addressing that question. And so it seems like we're having some connectivity issues today, so I apologize to everyone for that, but thanks for sticking with us. And in general, I just yeah, I want to thank everybody for sharing these exciting updates and assuring people in the Stacks community all of the processes and protocols we're putting in place to keep our users safe so that everybody can feel assured as they're using these really exciting new technologies that they can rest assured there's a certain level of security in our ecosystem and that security is a top priority. So I just wanted to take some time now to open it up to the audience. If there's some questions, uh, I see we have a number of people from the community that have been following along. If you have any questions for us, feel free to raise a hand and I'd be happy to bring you up to stage as a speaker. I think Algorithm, you had a question for us earlier. What are the things that you want to educate people about in relation to security? Nowadays, interacting with smart contracts are a very tough problem for users. Post condition, how to read a post condition. I don't know if you have some tips you can recommend. Yeah, I think definitely if you're using stacks, you should take advantage of the post conditions. Not every transaction will have post conditions. But if the smart contract developer is good, they should have built it into their transactions. And they're made to be relatively simple to read. So you can see if assets are supposed to be transferred or not. And you have a reasonable assurance that something unexpected is not going to happen after your transaction executes. I might just add that because it is relatively early days as far as all the different ecosystems, blockchains, wallets, etc. Maybe a tip would be as you're trying different wallets and trying different ecosystems, just generate new keys, new wallets as you're just experimenting. Of course, as you build trust, you can share keys between different wallets. But Swope Wallet, for example, that wouldn't have happened if users had just set up separate keys for either Swope or Phantom or whatever else they used on Solana. Definitely, you should separate your holdings in a hot wallet versus a cold wallet. If you're holding large amounts of crypto, definitely use a harder wallet, which is not constantly connected to the internet and because any hot wallet like MetaMask or Xverse or you know Hero Wallet is at a higher risk than something that is stored offline. That's all great advice. I'll just chime in too. Security is really important to me for multi-state, but also Dave and I are building console, which is Web3 chat, console.xyz. And we're actually putting out I'm really excited about this blog post next week, just about specifically about the Discord hacks, like a summary. We worked with a cybersecurity firm and we're going to have like nine tips in there for like specifically for Discord and NFT communities. But one of my personal favorites too that I learned like during the cybersecurity thing is, okay, so I think this could apply to everybody. But when you're like filling out those things and it's like, what's your mother's maiden name? And it's like, where was the first place? And you're like, you're so earnestly honest about what those answers are. No. The problem with that is you end up reusing those and they become as bad as reusable passwords. So I've gotten into the habit of just like having a ton of phones. Like, what's your mom's maiden name? And I'm like, Pink Dog Frog 54. <laughs> but it's, you're actually just adding this like total other layer. Because basically, if somebody just knows your mom's maiden name, they can get your bank. So 
anyway, I've been going down this whole journey of security, and I'm going to be starting to share a little bit more of that. Happy to talk to anybody who want to or follow me and look for more. That's super helpful. And of course, for experts, as a reminder, we're actually having a $500 giveaway in Bitcoin this week on Twitter. So be sure to participate because who doesn't like to win free Bitcoin? And next week, we'll also be publishing a blog on security, including a recording of this Twitter space. So thanks for following along. In case you missed anything that we talked about today in regards to tips and what's happening in the Stacks ecosystem and the exciting integrations we're doing with Multisafe, you can definitely tune in and listen in to that when we publish it next week. So again, thanks so much, everyone, for joining us today. Very first Own Your Crypto show. We'll be doing these more regularly moving forward. And if you'd like to tune in live, ask questions, or join the conversation, be sure to follow Xverse on Twitter. So until next time, I'm your host, Elizabeth Olson, Head of Growth at Xverse, and hope you all have a good day and talk to you next time. This has been the Own Your Crypto podcast, brought to you by Xverse. Our intention with this podcast is to empower you to take charge of your crypto with confidence and get excited for the future of self-custodial finance. If you enjoyed the conversation, please leave us a rating so more people can discover the show and feel free to share with a friend who's also curious about the future of Bitcoin. Thanks for listening. We hope you'll connect with us on Twitter at Xverse app and see you next time.